how does something fossilize? Most things don't. It's actually very rare that something actually does survive the test of time. Something actually gets preserved and becomes a longtime member of the fossil record. Let's take a look how the process of fossilization occurs. Fossilization is more likely to occur in aquatic environments, places where the water is depositing more materials and there are a lot of isotopes, these atoms floating around in the water that could help to preserve the creatures. Here we're seeing a trilobite living at the bottom of the water and it lives its life. Now trilobites, like many arthropods, might shed their shells and the shells can fossilize or they might die. And when they die or leave their shells behind, eventually this be becomes covered by more layers of sediment. Eventually it gets buried. Over time, you might see more and more layers being deposited on top of the fossil. Later, groundwater seeps into the rocks. Water moves through all the little pores and spaces within rocks very gradually. So over time, you might get a buildup of water or a water table within the rock. After this occurs, isotopes or little atoms that make up different materials which are dissolved in the water can seep into the fossils. Some of these dissolved isotopes include calcium, silica, which makes up a lot of our rocks, little bits of iron, and other isotopes might be in the water. Well, these isotopes or atoms will seep into the pores of the fossil. Over time, as the shell or the fossil is buried, it will start to break down. Groundwater will cause some of the original materials to seep away, a lot of the organic or carbon-based materials will eventually break down. But isotopes, which are just the atoms of different substances, which are dissolved in the water, may settle into the parts of the fossil that is dissolving. Calcium and silica, sometimes iron, and other isotopes that are dissolved in the water may start to fill in the pores of the dissolved parts of the creature, making a fossil. The end result is you get a complete copy. And it is because it's done on a molecular or atom scale, you get very close copies or very identical copies of the original material, only it's now in stone instead of organic matter. The end result is a stone fossil. If there is uplift, if the land which used to be underwater is now above water, the land will eventually start to break down again. Above water, things tend to weather away. Below water, things tend to be deposited. So when it's above water, it starts to weather away and the fossil will soon become exposed at the surface. If the fossil's lucky, or more likely if a person is really lucky, they might spot the fossil as it weathers out on the ground or identify the location as a place more fossils can be found if you dig in through the layers which are exposed. Sometimes these layers are mapped out by paleontologists and other fossil enthusiasts and it gives us a good idea of what fossils can be found in particular locations that have stones from particular ages. Most fossilization occurs in the water. That's why we see so many species of invertebrates and sea creatures preserved so well, whereas things preserved on land are more of a rarity. If we look on the ground, over here we see some natural sorting. The wave action moving larger objects with stronger waves and letting the finer sand settle out under weaker or lower energy conditions separates the items on the beach into different sizes and shapes. Very often the natural sorting occurs uh, with seashells as well. Here we can see hundreds or thousands or millions of seashells on the beach. So what is it needed for fossilization to occur? Well, the organism has to die and then very often it has to be followed by rapid burial. So for an example here, I dug a hole and I'm gonna bury a bunch of these shells. Now these shells are 
pretty strong. They're made with calcium carbonate. They're pretty strong shells. So that kind of increases their chances of fossilizing. Plant, probably not quite so much. Doesn't have very many hard parts. So probably won't fossilize. Let's have this crab shell. Oops, got away. Have this crab shell. And another, oh, another little weaker shell there. So I don't know if it's a ragonite or some other, or chitin or some other calcium based material, but it's weaker. So chances are it may not fossilize as well as those shells. We just have to see what happens though. So we're gonna have the rapid burial. And in a perfect world, they would have a very good chance of fossilizing. Now, I say in a perfect world because where we are, we're at a beach. This beach has a lot of activity and chances are it's gonna get dug up and moved around by the ocean. Storms and changes in the tides and movement of sand will very likely disturb these shells again before they get a chance to fossilize. But if they're really, really lucky, they could become fossils. So let's review. How does something fossilize? First of all, a fossil must come from a living thing. By definition, it must be a plant, animal, fungus, bacteria, or archaea, some type of living thing to leave a trace of its existence. Two, the organism must die or leave a shell or footprints or some other evidence of its existence. A lot of creatures leave shells behind, but then continue to go on living. Three, for best preservation, the organism usually has rapid burial. This reduces decay and creates a greater chance that the animal will fossilize. Four, minerals in the groundwater usually replace the harder parts or shells. This very often happens with uplift. When land is above the ground, water tables form and dissolved minerals can go into the fossil. And five, once above sea level, the rock tends to break down. Rocks weather away from rain and snow and ice and a whole number of processes. Once the rocks weather away, the fossil may be exposed and a lucky fossil hunter may find it before their fossil itself also weathers away. Well, thank you for watching my How Do Things Fossilize video. If you like fossils, you want to see some fossil collecting adventures, take a look at the fossil videos on fossil hunting and collecting with Chris. And once again, if you like this, let me know. Give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching and have a great day.